What's going on there, folks? Good evening. It is your Earthmaster here on this uh, Thursday, March 31st date, 2022. About 7 11 uh, p.m. California time. Latest quake out there on the USGS map. Uh, shows some activity around the Philippine plate. We're starting to see things kind of uptick, ramp up here with some uh, westward pressure movement along the eastward part of the trench here. Seeing uh, this activity kick up here first with a 5.1. Subsequently, a couple minutes later, seeing some uh, adjustment down here to the south and to the west of the Philippine plate there. A little bit shallow earthquake activity into the Philippine trench there with a 5.0. So a little bit of activity <clears throat> stretching up here along the region. Still seeing quite a bit of movement out here along the Loyalty Islands area, New Caledonia. Seeing quite the swarm of earthquake activity. Quite a few sixes and uh, some seven activity as well. Looking at the last seven days of movement here shows about 20, uh, 23 earthquakes or so within the region. Largest cluster so far, at least largest quake, a 7.0 earthquake. This is all roughly about 10 kilometers or so within the region of the trench. And that activity is uh, continuing to this date, continuous to, to this hour. This area is under quite a bit of stress. Of course, as uh, you recall, over the past few months or so, we have seen some quite a bit of deep earthquake activity along the Tonga Trench and the Kermadec Trench area south of Fiji with, without a whole lot of adjustment here within this trench area around the uh, Vanu Vanuatu area southward. So this area is definitely under the gun. It is not out of the question that we could see something a little bit larger than the 7.0. And this is all just kind of leading up to something major. We'll definitely keep this area under watch here pretty closely. Uh, around the Kurokam Chaka Trench, seen some movement earlier this afternoon, a 5.3 off the coast of Russia. And uh, movement up and down the Aleutian Trench as well. All very typical in that region. Western part of the states. Seen some activity out here south of the Long Valley Volcano into the Round Valley area. Seen a little swarm of movement here just to the west of the volcanic table lens area. 15 earthquakes or so since this uh, 3.9 struck last night. Quite a few earthquakes in that region. Southern California, there's not a whole lot going on. We're still kind of watching this area down here along the San Jacinto Fault Zone. Seeing a swarm of activity up and down the region. No major quakes, but it is still pretty active in terms of the length of the entire fault system. Uh, what is pretty quiet right now is the Sandres Fault. That activity is uh, pretty much non-existent. So they're looking at quite a bit of movement built up here uh, over the hundreds of years or so in this area. Eventually, one of these days, this uh, earthquake uh, fault system is going to produce an 8.1, possibly larger, in the Southern California region. That's been building up for quite some time. Up here along the Cascadia, we got some activity around the Gorda Ridges. Uh, some activity just west of the Cascadia subduction zone. I still got, still kind of got my money, my, my, my bets on this area that we could see possibly a Cascadia earthquake here pretty soon, with the massive amount of tremor taking place here. Um, I don't doubt it. Here, it's uh, 322 years since the uh, last major. Cascadia rupture, right? 1700. Right now, the Pacific Northwest shows absolutely no earthquake activity. It's kind of on the odd side because, uh, you know, you can go to pretty much any volcanic seismicity uh, map and check out uh, earthquake activity, which has been kind of ongoing around the region uh, throughout the Pacific Northwest. I'm just, I, I find it kind of strange that they're not showing anything, nothing, not even a speck of a microquake. So I just find it a little odd. This here is the Mount Hood regional uh, earthquake activity, right? Mount Hood, see? Volcanic seismogram here. We'll go ahead and click on that. There's some earthquake activity definitely occurring there at Mount Hood. Even though it's small activity, hey, it's still earthquake activity nonetheless. So I just, I, I, I don't know why they're not showing anything. I mean, zip zero, nada. Pacific Northwest, you're quiet. Still can't figure out what's going on with this movement here, but uh, over the last few hours, you've definitely seen a little bit of activity kick up here into the region. Tremor map 
and to the Pacific Northwest Cascadia. 538 epicenters of tremor today. This is a pretty large event ongoing right now here along the Cascadia. Uh, a lot of people considering that uh, this tremor activity relieves stress along the locked area of the Cascadia, but I don't understand how that is possible because if you got tremor activity ongoing down here, down dip into the subduction zone, where's that energy transferring, right? You're, you're kind of winding up the spring, so to speak, up here, up trend, up surface into the locked area. So if anything, this massive amount of tremor activity is not only winding up that string uh, tighter, but um, you know, making that large Cascadia earthquake happen sooner. We're gonna watch that pretty closely. I wanna show you guys the last 30 days of earthquake activity here. Okay, I'm gonna check this out. Even though you can look here on the map, most of the activity along the Cascadia kicked up about the 18th of March. Had a massive amount. And then the 25th, just a, uh, a large scale amount of tremor activity taking place here. So what do we got for tally? Seven or 9,729 epicenters of tremor along the Cascadia subduction zone. And it covers a pretty wide swath of movement here into the Northern California area, down here in the very southern end, right? Seeing that stretch across the coastal range. This area is under quite a bit of stress here, folks, the Cascadia subduction zone. All the way from Northern Cal, all the way up to Vancouver Island ranges here. We're still looking at a little spotty movement here south of Olympia, but uh, man, that's a lot. Almost 10,000 epicenters this month of trimmer activity. Go ahead and check out what's going on around the rest of the globe here. Some activity on the San Andreas Fault here just outside of Hollister, up and down the, the uh, central part of the uh, San Andreas Fault Zone. Some movement throughout Nevada and Oklahoma, throughout the uh, Intermountain West regions as well. A little bit of activity up into the Yellowstone region. They are reporting uh, some activity in the area. It looks like the area of Mary Lake and the Borehole region. A couple earthquakes here. Earlier this morning, since then, though, we've seen things kind of die down uh, for now. Uh, Oklahoma, Texas, New Mexico, some activity this morning. The rest of the eastern seaboard, eastern part of the state is pretty quiet. Around the uh, Puerto Rico area, seeing some movement as well, but uh, nothing spectacular. South America, a couple of spotty earthquakes up and down the Peru-Chile Trench and around the Easter Island area. Um... And, of course, all the activity out here in the trench region. Quite a bit of movement here, folks. So far, the 7.0 is the largest earthquake. I don't doubt it, though. We start to see something a little bit bigger in this area due to the uh, enormous amount of pressure this region is under. But the Philippine Plate here, we've got to watch that as well with this renewed movement up here to the north. There's got to be adjustment, right? When you see subsequent activity in a certain area of the plate, there has to be um, adjustment uh, along this plate boundary here. Pacific plate is a huge plate. And general movement here around the region is northwest, west-northwest in the pressure department. So got to watch that pretty closely. The eastern part, uh, uh, Middle East, I should say, pretty quiet. A couple earthquakes spiking up around Iraq, Iran, and the uh, Himalaya areas. Uh, let's see what else we got here in the region. Solar weather. Let's go ahead and check out the solar weather activities. Kind of odd, folks. This is the second time I've had to do this update tonight. Uh, I was pretty much doing the same thing, saying the same thing, and all of a sudden my computer froze up. It's as if I uh, hit a nerve or two in terms of folks not reporting stuff, agencies not reporting stuff. It just, it never fails. I mean, the live stream is down. It will be up after this video, just FYI. But I want to get this video out for the uh, notifications here. But uh, yeah, start speaking up about the PNSN uh, not reporting stuff and the USGS not reporting stuff. And bam, I get froze up. I get shut down. The sun is popping like crazy, kind of like popcorn in a, in a way. Um, although this G3 class storm that kind of hit, or didn't hit, we're expecting it late last night, early this morning, right? Kind of fluke, major fluke I would call. 
KP index of only a five. This is way below. I'm talking about 75%, way below than what they expected here for a G3 class storm. And these are the professionals here monitoring spacecraft activity, monitoring uh, the solar wave and the, the CME wind speed. Man, what a fluke, let me tell you. It was a major dud in terms of the energy that it was supposed to uh, hit Earth with. Sunspot activity, of course, yesterday we had the X1.3. Today we had another very strong event in M9.6, folks. Pretty close to an X flare. Sunspot culprit, it's going to be this one right here. Kind of round in the bin, 2975. It's kind of starting to conjoin here. And kind of looking like one massive sunspot here. We're kind of curious to see if this thing is going to uh, do anything odd once it gets around the bin. But 2975 is the major producer in all these flares recently. Got some further sunspot activity here. Um, 2978, 2981. A couple other regions building up uh, facing the Earth side here in the coming days. So we'll watch that pretty closely. But uh, these... You know, these forecasts, they come and go, they change. Uh, looks like we're still under a G1 class storm. I highly doubt that. Uh, next couple of nights, nights look minimal. Calling for a G1, though, on uh, April 3rd. Eh, we'll see, right? We'll kind of see. That's going to be from the X flare that kicked off yesterday. We'll see if that even hits Earth or not. I think we just got a glancing blow at that. Uh, let's see what else have we got here. I just I feel like I'm repeating myself. Deja vu because I have. It's just so odd, man. It's just really weird. I start speaking up and then all of a sudden somebody wants to pull the plug on me. I, it, it's hard to say exactly who it is, but eventually we'll figure it out, right? We'll figure it out. Uh, let's see what else we got. I think that's about it here, folks. Um, tomorrow is a new month. Um... Somebody mentioned that Pacific Northwest is uh, coming into earthquake season. Meaning that, uh, well, they get some large earthquakes up here in the April month. We'll just have to see how that plays out. Uh, right now, it's just, it's just unbelievably quiet. I don't believe it, though. I mean, I, I still think there's quite a bit of earthquake activity occurring up here with all the trimmer. But, uh, man, it's a beautiful place to live. Pacific Northwest. Buy your dream home up here. There's no earthquakes whatsoever, but there is. And what's lurking offshore is the massive Cascadia subduction zone that's been sleeping for 322 years. That's having a major tremor swarm right now. Unheard of? Eh, kind of had somewhat of a similar swarm back in 2018, early 2018, end of 2017. We'll see how this compares uh, in the coming days. But uh, we're getting up there. This is a, a pretty significant swarm of trimmer activity in the past week, eight days or so, that's been popping up here. I mean, it's uh, almost 10,000 epicenters of trimmer over the last, basically over the last two weeks, right? We can pull up the last two weeks here real quick here. From the 16th uh, to the 31st. We'll go ahead and check that out just real quick. Yeah, 8,173. Most of these uh, epicenters have occurred since then. So we had a couple days there of uh, maybe two or 300 that added on to this. But yeah, the, most of the activity within the last week or so. So be on guard, folks. I just, I, I don't understand why the activity is not being reported up here. Have a good night. Live stream is coming up. We'll get it going. No fear, right? If it goes down, I will fire it back up. That's a given. I, I, I can't put a Band-Aid on my mouth. It's not going to happen. Have a good night, folks. We'll chat you guys a little bit later. Peace out.